G'day everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Will Kitching and today we're going to be talking about um, getting started with lure fishing and how you can go out there and start catching fish on lures yourself. Now this will actually be um, a short two or three part series. Uh, the videos won't be long, I'll just keep them brief and simple. So in this video, we'll be talking about the gear you need to get started. And in the following videos, we'll be talking about uh, the best lures and the technique as well. I'd really, really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you get all of my videos. But without further ado, let's get into this video. Now, when you're lure fishing, your setup's going to be slightly different to when you're bait fishing. Don't let this overwhelm you, it's very basic. Uh, we'll start off with the rod. Alrighty, so say you walk into a tackle shop and you're about to look for a rod. So the first thing you want to look for uh, for lure fishing is a rod about seven feet long. Now the reason for getting a seven foot rod is so you can make nice long casts a lot easier. Uh, with shorter rods, you struggle to get distance on your casts. The next thing is, I'd say graphite rods are the best. So that's the material that the rod is made out of. This is so you can feel absolutely everything that's happening on the end of your line through the rod and right to your hand. With rods like fiberglass rods, it's not as easy. So yeah, seven foot rods and look for graphite. Now, this might be a new concept for a lot of people, but you wanna look for a rod that's fast taper. So some rods have a faster taper than other rods. Now the best way to explain this is just to show you. So I'm going to duck outside for a second and uh, yeah, show you what I mean by fast and slow taper. Alright, so talking about slow and fast taper rods. For starters, I'll show you a slow taper, what it looks like. So pretty much what it means is, when this starts to load up on a fish, the tip won't start to go, but the whole rod will start to bend over, sort of from about back here. As you can see, if I jiggle that around, the whole rod is quite flexible, and it sort of flops around and doesn't get back into place really quick. So that's what a slow taper rod looks like. What we have here is a fast taper rod. So when this starts to load up on a fish, it won't start bending from back through here, but just the tip will start to curve over. Now when you grab one of these and jiggle it, you'll notice that the tip snaps back into place much quicker. So that's what we call a fast taper rod. Pretty much, if you can jiggle it, and that tip snaps back into place nice and quickly, that's what you're looking for. You don't want the rod to start flopping around from right back here. That's the simple way to put it. Anyway, We'll head back inside and continue with the video. So now the last thing you want to look at for the rod is the uh, breaking strain of it. So if you're just starting out fishing with lures, uh, say you're fishing for flathead, whiting, brim, species like that, about a one to three kilo rod, or about a two to four kilo, um, which is rated to about six or eight pounds, is perfect. Then for your lighter offshore fishing, uh, so snapper and things like that, you want about a five to eight kilo or six to 10, which is, uh, you know, about 16 to 20 pounds. Just whatever you need for the, uh, the fish you're targeting. But that's it for the rods. That's all you have to know. So yeah, that's what you look out for at your tackle shop. Alrighty, next up guys, we'll get on to talking about the reel. Now, you don't need anything really special, expensive, or really big or anything like that. For beginners, or even for myself, Spin reels are the best, I, I definitely prefer them, but they are a lot easier and more simple to use than bait casters, and they do the exact same job. So, once again, starting off for your estuaries, I have a 1000 size reel, which is for brim, whiting, flathead, um, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, up to a 2000 size reel, or 2500, um, is absolutely fine. I've even caught absolutely monster flathead on this little 1000 size reel. So, yeah, you don't need anything massive. When you get up to offshore, um, so your snapper and mackerel and things like that, about a 4,000 or 5,000 size reel does the trick. 
Remember, when fishing with lures, you could be casting quite a bit, so you don't want anything too heavy to be swinging around all day. The main thing is, as with all fishing, you want a nice smooth, smooth reel, as you can see there. And that's because when you're fishing with the lighter line especially, um, you know, if your drag sort of locks up, that line's just going to snap. Or if you're fighting a big fish, you could pull the hooks or something like that. So you want that really nice smooth drag, um, otherwise you're going to lose fish. So that's what you want to look for in a reel. And that's pretty much it for the reels. Once again, just keeping it really basic and simple. Now, here's one of the biggest things um, for success with lure fishing. We're going to talk about the line we're using and our leader. So with lures, I think it's important to use braid. And this is for a few reasons. Firstly, it helps you cast lures a lot further. It's very thin and comes off the reel nicely. And since it's so thin, you can fit a lot more line on these small reels. So if you hook a big fish, you have less chance of it running off with all your line. The other thing about braid is, it's much more sensitive. So if you feel a little tap on your lure, you're gonna feel it. Whereas with mono, uh, you probably won't even feel anything and you won't know if your lure's working right. But with the braid, you can literally feel every single little tap and, and what's going on. It's amazing. So for your, your estuary species, your whiting brim flathead, anywhere from four pound line, which is pretty light, to six or eight pound. I've actually got eight pound on mine, um, but six is good. Anywhere around there is good for those species. And when you're fishing for snapper, I use probably 12 pound at the lightest and 20 pound, probably the heaviest. Alrighty, now let's talk about the leader. I think the best leader for lure fishing is fluorocarbon leader. This is because one, it's basically invisible underwater and two, it's nice and tough and um, good with abrasion. It's pretty resistant to that. Now, when attaching your leader to your main line, we don't use a swivel um, or anything like that. It's actually attached by a knot. So I'll just give you an example here of um, what we mean. So I've got the braid on the reel coming out to about here and um, then the leader, and I'll just tie the lure onto the end of that. But as you can see, attaching the leader to the main line, hopefully you can see it there against my dark shirt. Um, but yeah, that's braid over here and leader over here, just attached with a knot there. So there are many different knots out there for doing this, but I've found the best one for your light lines up to about 20 pound is the double uni knot. I've never had one break on me, um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube showing how to do that, and I even have one actually. And when you go heavier than that, so above 20 pound, I've found that the FG knot seems to be the best, but I'm still learning that one as well. I don't really use the heavier line as much. What I will say though, is if you're using really light little lures, um, your line, or especially your braid, has to be quite light um, or thin, as there's not much weight on the end of it when you're casting. You need probably about six pound. Now, how long do you make your leader, you may be wondering? Well, people say about a rod length, which is probably about right. When you're casting, you want your leader knot to be in between your reel here and the first guide. So somewhere in this space here. So you want your finger here when you're casting to be on braid and your leader knot to be about here maybe and then your leader through the rest of the rod. And your lure when you're casting, it's gonna be hanging, you know, maybe a couple of feet or a foot and a half off your rod tip. This way, your leader's nice and long still, so the fish uh, won't be scared off and they won't see your braid, but it's not too long, so that when you're casting, a lot of it is fluorocarbon, which will make your cast a lot shorter and make it harder to cast. Well, everyone, that's the basics you need to know about the gear, your rod, reel and line to get started with lure fishing. It's definitely not as daunting as it seems. So I hope this little video has helped. And if you get these little things right, you're giving yourself the best chance possible to catch fish on lures. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll be talking about the best lures um, to get started with. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you think this video could help some of your mates, share it with them or share it on Facebook. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up as well. Uh, it helps more than you'd imagine. 
If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to just comment below and I'll answer every single one. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for that next video. I'll see you in that one.